Hello everybody, this is Diane. I am about to start on a new project and I really wasn't going to do a video today, but I am going to do, I'm going to experiment on the cover of this, so I thought you might want to come along with me while I experiment. Um, but this journal theme is the Brontes. My very favorite novel is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. And of course, uh, she had two sisters who also were writers. Um, Emily Bronte, who wrote Wuthering Heights, and their younger sister, Anne Bronte, who wrote um, Agnes Gray, and I forgot the name of the other one, um, but I have a, I think I have the book cover in here so we can figure it out, but I just recently read Agnes Gray, but I really love Jane Eyre, and I've read um, Wuthering Heights a few times. It's not as satisfying to me as Jane Eyre. But it is a good read, so obviously, because I've read it several times. I started with Jane Eyre when I was quite young, and I've loved it ever since. I was, um, I don't know, a young teenager when I first read it. So what I'm going to use are a journal kit, and uh, two journal kits, actually. One is from Amy Joy Studios, and I bought this a long time ago. But it is called Jane Eyre, although the journal is going to be about all of the Brontes and not just Charlotte. But <clears throat> this is just a very small journal kit, five pages. Um, these are the five pages plus some ephemera pieces come with this kit. And I'm also using um, some of the images from Mrs. Cog's writing and journaling. Um, I chose the images that might go, that might look like, well, this is actually um, Louisa May Alcott right there, but she's from the, a similar time period. I'm not sure, I, I think she came after, but I don't know, not exactly sure. I'll have to look that up. But some of these other images also look like they could be from that time period or she looks earlier than that, but you know, I'm just going with it. I just chose some of the Mrs. Cog's images that I thought would look good in this journal. And there are the journaling cards that came with the Jane Eyre kit. So these are actually images from the story. And this is uh, a painting of the three sisters. And there are some, well actually these quotes I found on Pinterest. So there are some quotes from all three of the sisters and there's Agnes Gray, <clears throat> Jane Eyre. I know I have Wuthering Heights book cover. I have Agnes Gray twice. So I have quite a few pieces to use. All of these little pieces are from the Amy Joy Studio ephemera pages. So I have quite a lot to use here. Yeah, I don't see what the other um, Anne Bronte story was. I don't see it here. Thornfeld Hall, I think, is what it is. But, don't quote me. The other things I have I pulled are some coffee dyed paper, or maybe this is tea dyed paper. It's something I bought online. Um, these are guest check or guest book pages that I coffee dyed. I'll put some of those in. Composition book pages that I copy dyed. These have already been copy dyed. I haven't done any copy dyeing recently. And I have some scrapbook papers that I pulled that are already copy dyed. And some Tim Holtz vellum from his Wildflower vellum package. I think that's the name of it. Yeah, those these pages are tea stained. I see it right here. Tea stained bundle. It's from Nine of Crones on Etsy. Um, so what I'm going to do today is work on the cover. So this is the cover I pulled because it's a good size for the journal kit, and it's got this nice blue fabricy look to it. And I'm going to keep the spine, but I have to reinforce it because I put a hole in it. And I don't want 
this to show anyway. And I will cover up all the inside. But what I wanted to do was take one of the pages from Amy Joy Studios kit and put that on the front. And I didn't want this quote here. So I wanted to just put Bronte up here. So I got on Pinterest and I typed in for search, I typed in Bronte typology just to see if it would give me the word Bronte in different fonts. But what it did was it brought up this book, Charlotte Bronte's Atypical Typology. So I printed this whole page just so I could have this word out of it. And it's a good size, so I was happy with that. But I can cut these pieces out and use them for other things. I'm not going to let that ink go to waste. So then I thought, well, I can put that there, but I need something to cover up the rest of the words. So this is a Nick the Booksmith printable label, and that works perfectly. So that's what I'm going to put on the cover. I'm going to leave the Ex Libris up there. But then I wanted to kind of uh, vintage up the blue book. This is a vintage book, but I wanted to rub some brown paint on it. So I was looking for some brown paint, and I found this folk art cocoa bean um, antiquing medium, which I haven't used. I bought it a long time ago, and I haven't used it, so... I'm going to try it. I've got a baby white handy here to rub off. So I'm just going to, I think I'll start on the back cover. Just going to, well I could start on the front where it's going to be covered with the, with the image. So I've got some antiquing medium on this sponge and I'm just going to dab it on. and then rub it off with my baby wipe. Because I want the blue to show through. I just want it to look older and dirtier, more aged. I think that works nicely and I think I'm rubbing too much of it off. I might put a little more back on it, but yeah, look at it compared to that. It does make a difference. Yeah, I think I like that. So I'm just going to put a little more on the edges because the edges are, are always aged more. Kind of rub it in. And wipe off again. don't want it to be like a dark border, but I want it to look a little bit darker around the edges like an old book does. And I don't need to worry about the spine because that's all going to be covered. do anything too fancy to it, just darken it a little bit. How many of you like the Brontes and their books? And if you do, which of their books is your favorite? Do you have a favorite? And why? The reason I say that Wuthering Heights is not as uh, satisfying is because it's not a happy book. And, I don't know, the hero, Heathcliff, isn't a good upstanding guy. I like heroes that, you know, are really heroes, that are good guys. But it is a good book to read. It's, you get caught up in it, and you want to know what's happening. And so, it's not a bad book. It's a good book. It's a classic novel, but... I like Jane Eyre. 
I remember we had a encyclopedia, a set of encyclopedia type of books when I was young, and it had uh, condensed, this, this part is darker, ah, it's because my rag was so dirty, um, condensed classic literature in it, and, and it was illustrated, it just had small pictures. And I remember there was a picture of, in the Jane Eyre excerpt, not excerpt, condensed, it was a, it was the whole story, but it was condensed. And there was a picture of the madwoman, Bertha, tearing up Jane's wedding gown. And that fascinated me. So I read that story out of that encyclopedia when I was quite young. I probably won't put anything on the back as far as decoration. I really do like the blue linen look of this cover. So uh, I don't know how much you know about the Brontes but they were three sisters that lived with their father, who was a parson or clergyman in England, and their brother, who really was a ne'er-do-well, and he had aspirations to be a writer also. And of course, during this time period in the 1800s, um, women writers were not common. So the girls needed to do something to support the family, they couldn't depend on their brother. So um, they started writing, and I think it was Jane who first submitted something to a magazine or to a publisher, and she used a male pseudonym because she did not think that, and she, and she was correct probably, that uh, a male or a female writer would have been accepted either by the publisher or by the reading public. So they all had a pseudonym with their same initials, so they used the last name Bell. And I know that uh, Charlotte was Currer Bell, C-U-R-R-E-R, -R -E -R, and Anne was Acton, but I don't remember what Emily used for her pseudonym. And uh, it took a little while, but they eventually were all published and Anne, or Charlotte, I think, had the most success with her um, Jane Eyre, but Wuthering Heights was successful also. And obviously, Anne's books had some success because they are still in print. They are all still in print. Whoop. Sorry, getting enthusiastic here. I'm going to use this pretty blue fabric. This is the only blue page in the kit, but I think it's, I, I wanted this page on the cover because it pictures all three of the girls. I saw another Jane Eyre kit that has more pages. I don't remember if it has ephemera, and it's got very pretty pages, and I, I don't know uh, the name of the Etsy shop, because I, and it's on sale this week, too, I think, or right now, anyway, but um, I didn't purchase it, because I only want to make the one book, the one journal, and I already have a Jane Eyre kit, so I'm just going with what I have. Okay, that's good. So I'm just going to take some Tyvek, T-Y-V-E-K. I often get questions about the Tyvek. And it is a plastic, plasticized paper. I don't know what it's actually made out of, but you can't tear it. But you can easily cut it. 
So because it doesn't tear, it's a great reinforcement for spines. And you can get them in sheet form, eight and a half by 11 sheets. If you just type in, search for um, Tyvek sheets on Amazon. Um, I, I don't, I was unable to find them, find sheets when I was looking and I ended up getting a bunch of packages of envelopes at Walmart actually because Walmart had some for a very short time and then they clearance them out so I picked up several packages so I just cut these envelopes apart but you can get them in sheets Tyvek sheets um, okay I'm going to before I do this I want to do this this is what I was doing. This is why I came on, live, on video. So before I do the spine, I want to Mod Podge this down. I didn't get my Mod Podge out. I was just thinking about the color treatment I was doing, the paint treatment. I wasn't thinking ahead to the Mod Podge stage. new bottle of Mod Podge. Whoa. And I'm hoping this, the ink isn't going to smear on that. If I'm not too liberal with Mod Podge, I might be okay, but there is a pretty good saturation of ink on that page, so we'll see how it goes. Usually when my tablet makes that noise, it's usually nothing more than someone pinned one of, repinned one of my pins on Pinterest. And I don't pin much anymore. I, I hardly ever look at my Pinterest. <laughs> but that's usually what that sound is. Sometimes it's a uh, Facebook message, messenger. So it usually is something I just ignore. This paper will wrinkle with my patch, but that's okay. Let's try to straighten it out a little bit. None of the girls married, and uh, most of them died young. I don't, maybe all three of them did. I know the brother did because he was an alcoholic, and I think he did drugs too. Whatever the popular drugs were of the day, laudanum or whatever. strange that these girls wrote women, women not girls, they wrote romance novels, gothic romance novels, and none of them married, but, and Jane Austen, Austen also wrote kind of comedic romance novels, most of hers were rather comedic, and she never married dry. I'm going to 
put Mod Podge on the back cover just so they have the, both have the same finish on them, the front and the back. I'm thinking um, I'm going to use, in addition to all of those digital images that I showed you and the papers, I will use um, some of my linens in this book, my vintage linens. So I'm only going to make the one instead of two or three journals this time. just let that dry. So I've been uh, systematically going around this room and organizing and um, calling, um, destashing some stuff, and trying to think about the best way to store my things so that I have the things that I use all the time handier. I'm just trying to make my room more functional. So I've been pretty much done in here. Um, I think I have some art supplies that I need to go through and organize them, but everything else is pretty much done. And I vacuumed. It looks great in here. I love it when I get to clean and vacuum in here. Then I can start on my other storage areas. I have storage in my office and in the little cubby that's between my this room and the office. I have a bookshelf that has a lot of storage. So I'll start on those areas. And I do have quite a bit of de-stash stuff that I still need to put in my shop. I just put some in this weekend and you guys all purchased it. Or not all of you, but you purchased all of it. It's all gone. So I thank you for that. In a happy mail... I forgot who it was, but somebody sent this to me, and I believe that it's um, a digital that they made. So I'm going to cut that and put this on the end papers of that journal. I think this will be really pretty on the end papers. This is the other half of the page that I printed a, a duplicate, um, and I used the front, the other, the one half on the front cover. And I will just make a journaling card or something out of this. But I cut it down, and so part of the quote got cut off. So I'm going to put that on it and then just cut that off. But I am not sure exactly what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to make a journaling card with it. That's all I know. So, well, I need the book back so I can measure it. So I can cut my pages. The cover is five and a quarter by eight and a half. Five and a quarter by eight and a half. So five and a quarter doubled is ten, ten and a half. So I'm going to, I like to, there to be plenty of space between the edge of the pages and the edge of the cover. So I'm going to start with nine and three quarters. I'm going to start at ten. And if I don't, if I don't think that has enough space, I can trim it. And of course, this is eight and a half wide, so I'm going to take it down to eight and a quarter. It's only eight and a quarter. I wonder why. 
I thought the pages were eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna take it to eight and one eighth. And let's see if we like this size. Here comes the book cover again. Yeah, I think that's good. I could make it a little bit shorter. Okay, I'm sure you don't want to watch me cut papers. So I'm going to make something with this. I have some coffee dyed paper scraps. I will end up probably sewing around this. So I just stuck some tape down in the center and I'll cut this paper to fit. And trim around it. So we're getting more snow. In December, we had whoops, about three feet here in in because uh, it snowed for three days straight. And then just a few weeks ago, we had oh that's torn there, but that's okay. So I'm going to sew around it. Just a few weeks ago, we had um, two feet, almost two feet anyway, and that all happened in one day. No, the three feet happened overnight, like a day and a night it snowed. The two feet happened over a three day period. That's what it was. It just was a lighter snow. Didn't come down quite as thickly, so in three days it accumulated about two feet. So it's snowing now, and it's supposed to get heavier. It's like four o'clock in the afternoon on Monday and the snow is supposed to get heavier overnight and into tomorrow and continue through tomorrow late afternoon so we're going to get a lot of snow again we have had so much snow this winter but I was able to go well I was going to go to the post office this morning and get my packages mailed from the weekend but it's President's Day today, so I didn't get to do that, and I don't know if I'll be able to go tomorrow. Might have to wait till Wednesday. So I will sew around that, and I have a nice journaling card right here. That's one of the book pages. I'm going to cut my vellum, just because I like the vellum and I want to cut it. I've been hoarding this vellum for a long time. You know what it's like. You do it too. What did I say I was cutting this to? 10 inches. I'm, I like this scripty text, the uh, alphabet there, because they are writers. by eight and an eighth. That'll make a nice page. I might have, I'm not sure how I will arrange them yet, but Here's my page I cut. It might look nice just to have it on a tea dyed page. Helps the image stand out more. And then when you write on it, you'll see you're writing through this. That's pretty cool. So maybe that's how it will go. We'll see.
I hate to cut these roses off. I'm going to cut the bottom off and see how much of the roses we can save. Well, I'm going to cut off that parcel post label, but that's okay because I can use that. I can cut that and use it as an embellishment somewhere. sisters were going to come over for our sister day tomorrow, but we're postponing it because of the weather. We'll try next week. Okay, so I've got my cover drying, my pages. I'm starting to cut. Oh, while I was cleaning, this has nothing to do with this book, while I was cleaning and organizing today, I have uh, a basket in my closet. It's just on the floor, and I'm always moving it out of my way so I can get to something else, but it contained Martha Stewart um, doily punches. I'm going to show it to you. I got them on clearance. My husband actually talked me into getting them because he was with me and saw them. I don't have a really good plate, way to store my punches, so I just have them all in, in this basket on top of the closet shelf. At least it's not sitting on the floor. Um, but I did take the ones I used the most and put them handier. Um, anyway, this is a Martha Stewart punch. I have two doily punches, actually, because this is, this is one of them. And you put the plate that matches this you put here. So my husband and I, my husband saw these on sale on clearance. So it's been a while, you know, because my husband hasn't been with me for four years. Um, so this goes in there. It fits in there. And then this, whoops, put your Put your paper here, and then that's a magnet, a very strong magnet. That goes there, and then this fits there, and, and this sticks on with a magnet too. And then you punch, and then you um, turn it so it, it turns the paper, and then you punch, and then you get a doily. So this was there, and then this was there, and this is a different setup but it does kind of the same thing. So we didn't realize that they were two different systems. And so we just bought what they had. And then he told me I, I could go online and look to see if I could get some more of the punches to go with it. Cause there were only a couple punches. And that's when I realized that they were different systems. So I had punches for a system that I didn't have. And I had a system that only had one punch or something like that. So I got online and I ordered additional. So that's what, I, and I've had this in my basket here and I haven't been using it. I did use it at first when I first got it. The difference, they both make nice doilies, but the difference is this, this system has this right in the center, this big thing right in the center. And so you get this big space that's not punched but you get a really pretty pattern around the outside. And so you could do all kinds of things with that center. So these are all done with that system. Aren't they pretty? I use the um, st uh, Stampington and Company. What is that? You know what I'm trying to say. Stampington um, magazines that have the artist pages inside. I use those artist pages for these thought it was a good thing to do with them. And then the other one has a littler piece in the center so you can punch closer around it so you get a more doily look. I guess I only have two punches for that. 
but I love this one. It looks like a doily. But then this one's really pretty too. I love them all. So that's what I played with this morning and then, you know, got them all stored into one basket. I did have two separate baskets for the Martha Stewart punches and my, my, my doily punches and then all the other punches. So I still want to have a better way to store them, but for now this is better than it was. So these are just sitting on my desk and I just thought I'd show them to you because now I'm going to go and cut some more paper and wait for my cover to dry. So tell me what you think about the Brontes and if you have read their books and do you like the books and which one is your favorite and anything that you want to talk about with the Brontes or the doily punches or whatever, just leave me a comment and give me a thumbs up and come back to see me in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creative day today. Bye-bye.